Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 61 of Two Goalies, One Mike. I'm Johnny Cullen. We're alongside at, Dwayne at Spinell, as always. How we doing, babe? We are at 62, not 61. We are... I said 61? No, 62. I know, but I said 61? Yeah, you definitely said 61. After that whole debacle pre-show? Yeah, just let, just let everybody know, we, we, we tried to start the show once already, and <laughs> we couldn't... We tried to establish that it was 62, and uh, that was maybe two minutes ago. Maybe you two. Still, you still um, botched it. I love it. That's funny. That's classic. That was unintentional. But um, a lot on tap today, Dwayne. It's been a little bit since we've last talked. Uh, obviously, the Sabres finish up their regular season. Um, not the way we wanted to, you know, finish. Um, you know, not the way we wanted the season to go, but certainly Im- impressed with some of the younger players and the job that Donnie – Don Granado did. I love how Ristolainen kept calling him Danny in his press conference. Um, you know, uh, onto that, we have a, a ton to get through with the locker room clean out part one interviews. Um, for those of you that didn't listen to, hopefully you've listened to it by the time this airs, Jack Eichel, I don't want to say dropped a few bombshells uh, because it was very cryptic. Uh, but I, I mean, I think we all know enough to read into the lines that When that shit is said, it lights a fire. Um, You know, Ryan Miller, Sabres, one of the all-time greats, should have his number retired. Dwayne's a a big uh, proponent of him and a fan of his. He played his last NHL game. Uh, We're going to do an extra special episode about that, right, Dwayne? You want to tell us about that? Yeah, uh, we're hopefully going to have on a few guests. Um, You know, definitely another fellow goaltender. Uh, Mark Rotolo has shown some interest in being on with us. Mark? Mike Rotolo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His older brother, Mark. Yeah, you know Mark. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Uh, plus, sorry for the uh, the screen there. But um, and I'm working on a few other guests too. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to divulge anything now, but we're, we're I'm working hard to get some other uh, faces on the show with us, some other voices, maybe even one that knows knows Ryan a little bit. We'll see what happens. Um, again, I'm not replace gonna... me. Yeah, definitely, definitely replacing you. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um. But, you know, let's just get some people that knew Ryan personally. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I'm trying. So, uh, you know, that'll be definitely going to be an episode we want to listen to for some upbeat, positive things, unlike right now, which after that uh, press conference was uh, – <laughs> that Jack Eichel presser was, wow, uh, very, very revealing. And, Kali, I'm going to flat out say it. Did your – the impression that you got from that in terms of Jack's injury, do you get the impression that ownership was maybe a little bit too involved? 100%. And and on that note, I feel like you can look back at all of the problems or 99% of the problems that this organization has faced, Dwayne, and you can trace it back to somehow the ownership was too involved. Yes. Um, and it's becoming more clear and more clear. Now, listen, on a separate note, Separate note, it was very clear. Jack said it. You know, all the guys said it. Ralph was a tremendous human being, a great guy. But none of them came out and said he was a good coach and that his systems worked. And, and and that's where I got caught up. I You know, you want your coach to be charismatic. You want him to be a likable guy. But that's just one piece of the puzzle. Look at Tortorello. You know, I mean, a lot of the people hate him, but he, he has a system that works. So very telling in that aspect. Dwayne, I'm going to come out and ask you because the way I feel is after listening to that, uh, and we'll touch on the injury side of it, but he didn't back away from the from the trade talk. He had a very clear chance. I think John Waro asked him, you know, did you request to ask to be traded or not? And he danced around it. And listen, I get it. That and it's kind of like code in the NHL that you know it's going to be a little bit cryptic. You don't want to say anything too revealing. That's just how it's how it is. Whether you agree with it or not, that's how it is. I think we can agree there. But I, I was quick to shoot down Jack Eichel getting traded throughout this whole period, but I'm not so sure, Dwayne. So my question to you is, you know, instant overreaction segment here. Is Jack Eichel a Sabre in 22-23, by the end of the 22-23 season? Yes. I, I think so. Um that's first off, yeah. first off, and it's not because I own a Jack Eichel jersey. I, I actually put it on for specifically for one reason and one reason. I think only I own a Mogilny jersey, but I'm not sure. Yeah, you do. You do. Don't worry. Hey, hey dude, like, listen, <laughs> that's out of my hands. That's in China's hands. Like, I, that's not on me. I didn't take your money. I gave it to them. But that's the that's story. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Continue with your point. But regardless, um, 
you don't trade guys like Jack Eichel. When is the last time you saw a player of his caliber get traded? You you can't recall. Ryan, Ryan Johansson got traded for Seth Jones. Are they on Jack Eichel's level? I'd say Seth Jones is. Close to it, sure. Um, franchise piece, and they're different positions. Yeah, but franchise center, that is probably – when you're starting a team like with Seattle, for instance, in this expansion draft in their first season, I think the, the first position you need to address is finding that franchise center. I think that that's the most important piece to any team. Depth down the middle is the most important position to have depth in, um, again, in my opinion. You just don't trade guys like Jack Eichel, who are arguably a top five to ten player in the world, not just the league, the world. Um, even Jack Eichel said he doesn't believe he believe he only scratched the surface last season of how good he can be, and admitted that he played with a fractured rib, um, then the ankle injury, and now a herniated disc. Don't forget um, about the, he he also fractured another rib non contact. Yep, 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 yep. So it was multiple rib injuries, and he mentioned that he was dealing with an abdomen injury, which I remember specifically that he suffered last season that was lingering this year. And anybody who's played hockey knows that everything that you do shoots up from your legs to your core when you're shooting the puck. It's, it's all about transferring power and weight, you, you know, what, when, when, when you're shooting the puck. So, like, and I, I saw it specifically on the power play to start the season when he was in his spot, you know, kind of right around where Ovechkin likes to hang out, and he just didn't have the same zip. He didn't have the same power. His shot was all over the place. It wasn't accurate. You could tell he was playing – you know, not 100%. He wasn't 100%. You can just tell just from being a hockey player, watching hockey, seeing a hockey player, that guy isn't right. And I, I, called it, I called it from the first week of watching him play. Like, there's something wrong in there. And now hearing this, that ownership, when this whole neck thing happened, was trying to speed up the timetable for him to come back. That's now, a joke. Did, that, so here's the thing. Not, I agree okay, okay. with you, but he didn't specifically say it was the neck injury. I was trying to, and it probably is. Let's agree. Let's, it probably was yeah. with that. But what, what alarms me is maybe, and I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. I'm not saying I'm right here. Maybe it could have been from the very beginning. Maybe he wanted more time. You know, the training camp was sped up already. He had that injury before training. I mean, he missed most of training camp. Maybe they pressured him to get in the lineup more than he was ready, coupled with the neck thing, and there was a disconnect there. But the way I look at it, is the season was once the season was lost, it becomes long term. And now here's one thing, Dwayne. He came out and he said something that I liked. He said, you know, my number one priority is is Jack Eichel. And I guarantee some people are gonna run with that in the wrong way. Fuck that. Everybody has to look out for yourself. It's a cutthroat business, and I'm happy he made that point. That if you ask any NHL player, they'd say it's a business, and I agree with that. And I think sometimes fans, you know. I don't want to say lose sight of it, but like, fuck. Ah, I don't know what I'm trying to get to. It, it just, I, I really am curious to know what the dynamic was because at, at some point you're playing for a lost season. He's your franchise guy. Let the fucking guy get healthy. Is that what you were alluding to? Yeah. You, you know, that guy is the most important player on your team. I don't care. You know, you could say what you want about Rasmus Dahlin. He's the second most important player on your team. You but, know who the most important player on the team is to me? Who? The goalie that we don't have. Well, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get we'll get to that. Um, but right now, the most important player under contract on your team is hands down, one hundred percent, Jack Eichel, and making sure that even in with the way this season was going, like I understand coming out of that COVID pause, you had a five hundred record, which you know that many games into a season. When's the last time we could say this team was trending in the right direction that far mm -hmm. into a season? That and they did. They that, that, far, that win streak we had two years ago was early on, right? That was right to start the season. So we started the season. Uh, I don't know. Yes. Um, it's it's difficult to, to remember, you know, that far into a season, remembering a team that like, oh, wow, man, like maybe we can really make a push here. And I think one of the things that management showed coming into this season is that they were willing to do whatever they could to make Jack happy. When you go sign Taylor Hall, you can say what you want about the Cody Eakin signing. Yeah, I, I think that was more of a rail. He his job this year. Listen, Eakin? yeah, like, but you're, when you look at through the lens of, I know this isn't your main point, and I won't, I won't keep you long. 
when you look at it through the main point of him versus Larson in that fourth line center spot, you got to remember too, Gergensen's was out. And listen, I know he's a role player, but like those are valuable minutes. And I, I thought that um, um, who did we trade to to Boston with Hall? How am I blanking on this? Oh, uh, face Lazar, off tonight. Lazar, Lazar. Lazar. I think Curtis Lazar ate up some of that with with Gergensen's. But you're right. I think that that management tried to make Jack Hacky, Jack happy. Jack Hackey. Jack Hackey. Um, that at Boston what point accent. Do you like I think smart teams they build the team to win a championship, therefore it makes your star players happy. You know what I mean? I think it's a, d- a slippery slope when when you look at it like we're gonna make moves to keep Jack happy. Like fuck, build it, build b- bring in the right players and he'll be happy. And it doesn't have to, you know what I'm trying to say? Like I feel like I've heard that narrative before, and I, I believe it has some merit to it, Dwayne. I it just it scares me to think. Well, let's hire a coach that Jack likes. Let's let's bring in guys that Jack likes. Fuck, if you bring in the guys that are going to help you win hockey games, I, I would assume Jack would be happy. I don't know. I could be wrong. It, it did, he did sound pleased. Like, yeah, you, you heard all the negative stuff about the injury, um, how it wasn't handled correctly, how there was a disconnect. But he did say positive things. Like, he did say he liked the direction that – the team was heading under Granado. He liked to see he, he liked seeing like the success of certain players. He didn't just talk about Reinhardt. He did he maybe he didn't mention names. I know he mentioned Reinhardt mm-hmm. specifically. I was gonna say my favorite part of the interview was like, well, nobody uh, you know enjoyed this season except Rhino. He had a great year. <laughs> yeah. Rhino, yeah. Well, you know, because Reinhardt. Reinhardt, Reinhardt knows he's gonna get paid now. That's know, what that's what? all about. That's what that's all about. Pay him. You know what I think is so ironic, and I hate to keep jumping like this, but fuck it, who cares? That. Uh, ever since O'Reilly left, what's been the dialogue around the Sabres? We need that second center, right? That other top six center. Fuck, yep. guys, he's been here all along. He's fucking been here all along. I've been saying it for years. Like, I have, I, people always think that I have these issues with Sam Reinhart, that, you know, that I want him go. No, it's not that. I just didn't want to pay Sam Reinhart seven, seven to $8 million a season to, for 60 points on Jack Eichel's wing because if you're paying I'll, I'll that. Pay him, se- se- will you pay him seven to eight now? For, to play center? Yes, I would. $7 million for second line center for that kind of production. Why are you fire me up? up. Exactly. Fire Why up. Why are you team. Because this team has lacked that since Briere and Drury left. Not even not even, not even, even O'Reilly. Because we still didn't uh, have yeah. the depth. Hey, let's, let's be honest. O'Reilly underachieved here. You can you can draw that. Well, I should, I should, yeah, he did. We've seen what he's capable of, and I'm sure he'll say it. The, the team underachieved, he underachieved. Um, you, just don't, you just don't trade away centers like that. I'm sorry, you don't. What do you okay. mean? Wait, wait, Dwayne. You, you mean just don't, you don't trade that. away centers for Vladimir Sabotka <laughs> and Patrick Berglund, who dipped on do? you, who dipped on you like after 30 hey, games. That's not what good teams do. Good teams <laughs> no. don't trade away it, it, um, top six it, centers. It, along no, the you don't. For no. Vladimir Sabotka and no. Jeff. Yeah, what's his <laughs> name? Patrice Berglund. What's his name? Uh, Berglund. Jeff Berglund. I'm gonna call him Jeff. Jeff. We're gonna call him Jeff. But like the thing is, like you just don't trade away those players. You don't trade away Jack Eichel because that's the player you're striving to get. That's the guy you're striving to get. That's the guy every team wants on their team. So if you have him, build around him. Don't trade that away. Don't make the same because you will not. I'm telling you, you will not get the value of Jack Eichel in a trade. It won't happen, especially after that press conference. You just lost a shitload of leverage. I'm raising my hand. Can I ask a question? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Time for overreaction Monday. Uh, I'm going to throw this out here just to see what I get. I think if, here's a big if, if the Sabres get fair value, and I don't want to throw out scenarios right now because then we'll go down a rabbit hole. If the Sabres get a young, generational-type talent at center, there's only a few. Austin Matthews, Jack Hughes, you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? If they get like a fair swap for an elite, um, you know, what do you call it? Um, a, a generational type player, like so, a foundational player, right? At center. If they do and they can move on for Jack and do a swap for one of those five or six young elite centers, I think the Sabres will be better off. Yeah, but what team is going to do that? And that, that's why I I, that's I, think, that's it. I think it's very unlikely, and that's why I'm against the idea of trading Jack. But after listening to that fucking interview, how do you not think that maybe 
maybe we'd be better off with a new person leading our franchise. Listen, I have nothing against Jack. I think he's elite. I think it's been unfortunate to see that we haven't given him the pieces to be successful, but he was the first to say that he underachieved. And look at fucking um, Sam Bennett. Look at how he is like. Everybody thought he sucked in, in, in Calgary. Thought he was underachieving. Thought that, you know, that was his cap. Look at him in Florida, bro. Well, that's what, that, that's what like, I mean, here's the thing with Jack. And then we, we make that comparison with Sam Bennett. It's like, it's no, not no, like I Jack. It's not, two of them. Oh, I was no. comparing the change of scenery. It's, oh, I know, but it's not like Jack Eichel has like played badly. You know, he was on an MVP pace last year until he had that abdomen yeah. injury. This past season, he did not play good for a no. myriad of reasons. I don't think it's indicative of to his talent and his play level. He no, was no. Good this year, it might have been better with the injuries he had if Jack would have hung him up a month before he did. Hundred percent. Like I, hundred percent agree. I like there's so there was so much going against Buffalo this season. As much as you want to say how great of a guy he is, how much of you know a good of a human being, Ralph Kruger was not fit to coach this hockey team. He's not a fit to coach at all. Ralph Kruger's not fit to be a coach in the NHL. No, he's not. He came in with a very specific system, and I don't know the details of it, but watching enough of those games, you could tell the players were handcuffed because you know they would be either benched or not played or not given opportunities or yelled at. Or, or corrected for doing something not in his system. In today's NHL, it's such an ebb and flow game, Dwayne, that you need to play loosely within a structure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What do we see from Darlene and Tate Thompson and, and, and Middlestat in the last, and Borgen? I could go down the list. What did we see from them since Donnie took over? We saw them playing with their skill, and, and, and because the game is so fast, if you're thinking about where your coach wants you to be, you're already a second behind. You know what I mean? Yes, positional play is hugely important. Playing within a system is is a key to any championship team or any team that wins. But you have to be able to play free. Am I wording that right? No, you're definitely wording it right. Do you agree? I 100 percent agree. Um, you should you you shouldn't. Well, maybe force- we can trace it back to the whole Skinner thing. Maybe Jeff Skinner was the one guy brave enough to say, you know what, Ralph, you're fucked. Your system fucked. Yeah, hundred percent. It's just and I'm not gonna fucking stand for it. No, and I wish the whole team would have did the Rudy thing and laid down their jerseys for skins. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. I think Skinner is a perfect example. Is you don't? I mean, I understand that you want to play a system that you think is successful. You want to imp- implement a system that you think is. Successful. I think Buffalo's first. You, you go outside the Sabers. Our first, you know, uh, our first uh, exposure to that was when Rex Ryan was. Uh, the the coach of the Buffalo Bills, he switched our defense from a four three to a three four, and tried to tried to make Mario Williams be a pass coverage you know, defensive end, which he he even says like I don't I don't cover passes, I rush the quarterback. Now, <laughs> you know, what, are you, what are you talking about? Um, but you know it, it's it, same thing here is you you are asking offensive offensively gifted players to p- play a defense first style, and that's just not going to work. You you got to score goals. You have Jack Eichel, you had Sam Reinhardt, you had Taylor Hall, you had all these like offensively gifted dynamo players. Like again, Rasmus Dahlin too on the blue line guy. You know how he was able to get drafted first overall is just the explosive ability of, as an offensive defenseman, a puck carrier defenseman. You neutered that about this team, and yes, neutered, neutered, you neutered it. Word. Neutered's a good word. I feel like um, Rasmus Dahlin was neutered, and then they did the the un they, the unneutering, and they gave him his balls back. Yeah, exactly, yeah, it exactly. It's it, you know, and that Granada. Uh, not, yeah, like, not Granado, it's Donny. Donny, you, you gotta see it. In you bring it. You bring in Donny. You bring in Donny. You bring in. You bring in Donny as, as the interim head coach. I like it. playing for Donny. I, 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 I like exactly. You that bring from Ivan Drago. Can I talk, to Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, like, but like, it's it's. Fuck you. All right, great. Uh, but listen, you you bring in Granado and. All of a sudden, you see, like, well, even he was chipping away at the previous coach uh, coaching style. He he was throwing he shade at it. He, he threw it. some yeah. shade at it, and he's like, "Listen, like, I'm here to let these guys play hockey, and you and, and develop a system around what they're best at, and that's pr- you know, providing offense." And I just can only imagine what this team could have been like under Granado with a healthy Jack Eichel, because I think. You, again, if you get the same guy from last year before that abdomen injury, and you have 
Jack Eichel is your number one center. Sam Reinhardt is your number two center. And Dylan Cousins is your number three center. And maybe we screw it. Maybe you can't. You, I, I know I hate saying this, but Casey is your four center. Or maybe you throw Casey or Cousins in the wing. Yeah. It, it, but that's, that, dude, that is depth you haven't had at Why center. Not? Why not run that back next year? Exactly. So you, you, you get all these guys in the room. You, you want to talk about a leadership group. I would get those four centermen in, in a room tomorrow. Tomorrow. And I'd say, hey, listen, this is, I, Jack, I understand your disconnect with ma- management and just like, uh, just how you're upset. But listen, this is our, this is the way we look at this. This is what we plan to do. This is a depth at a position we haven't had in a long time. And we believe, and you have Granado there too. You say, we believe that this is a playoff team next year. If we make the right moves in free agency, which we plan on doing it. And we have you for as, you know, either you have Sam as your 2B, your, 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 you know, you know what I mean? Your, your we, first. We don't need to waste time with the company. Exactly, exactly, you don't. But like that is, that is depth that even a lot of good teams in the NHL that are going to play in the playoffs don't have right now. It's I true. Agree. I agree. My thing is this, Dwayne. Looking at it like that, in a per, I, I will be the first one to say I think the Sabers are so much closer to being competitive, not winning the cup, being competitive, being a playoff team than anybody else. I think that, you know, you go back to what you said. If you if we would have started this year with Granado as co- or with a coach that's not Ralph Kruger, not Ralph Kruger system, with that those lineup changes, like you said, <clears throat> and everybody was healthy, yeah, man, I'm with you. That's why that's where I'm coming from. I don't think this team's as far away as everybody thinks they are, Dwayne. Oh, I don't. I've been saying I this think, for weeks. Right. Not look, as far look, away as you think. Look, you, you, Holland, Holland Stahl, for whatever reason, didn't work out. And the reason why I'm happy they didn't work out is because it gave the young guys yeah. an opportunity to prove themselves. Before that coaching switch ever happened, and Casey Middlestack got a sniff, and Tage Thompson even got a sniff in the right system, mm-hmm. those players weren't in our future. Now they are. Now the pieces that you need to plug in aren't these big roles. Would it help to bring in a stud right-handed defenseman? Yes. Would it help to bring in a, another big-time scoring winger to play with them? Yes. But when you look at our skill – I'm just going to ramble off some names, and you tell me if this is a good piece of core to the top nine. Eichel, Reinhardt, Cousins, Middlestat, Thompson, Skinner, Asplund, Olofsson. That's eight. That's eight young guys that I think, I think are, are top nine forwards, okay? I think I think, I think think uh, instead of Asplund, I would go with Rustalainen. Okay, good, good, fair yeah, point. You're right. I, I, you're, I agree. I, I haven't seen enough of both of them to distinguish. I, all I've known is – both of those guys can be a part of this solution, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I think I'm not going to be one of those guys that says, "Oh, we need to bring in a heavyweight fighter." No, the, the, the times have changed. I'm all for fighting. It's the way we police ourselves. Anybody that disagrees, if you fucking pulled the NHL players, it would be 100 percent to zero of keeping fighting, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. But now you've seen in the past ten years. Even when I was playing in junior hockey, Dwayne, we had a fucking heavyweight fighter. That probably was should was good enough to play junior B, but you know he just he was there to fight, right? He was our eleventh forward or thirteenth forward. He was there to fight. You have to be able to play the game now. I wouldn't mind us finding a Tom Wilson type, a Ryan Reeves type, somebody like if Gergensons was a heavyweight fighter, problem solved, right? If fucking right. Um, Cody Eakin was a heavyweight, they could handle himself. I'm sure they could, but they're middleweights, right? Correct. You need a guy. Like that, that can also play the game in your bottom six, and we don't have that. That's at the bottom of my priority list. I just think that needed to be said. We didn't get to talk about the Tom Wilson hit. I don't want to get into it with you. All I'm going to say is that was an unfortunate situation. I'm not going to talk about whether he should have suspended. But Naren was stupid to go after him. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, did he take? Did he cross the line? Sure, he did. Does that happen in that situation? Yes, it does. Tom Villain is not the Wilson. Tom Villain is not the Wilson. <laughs> Tom Damn Wilson me. is not the villain everybody makes him out to do. He plays with an edge. I got to play against him. He broke a couple of my fingers. Whatever. Um, I sure as hell wouldn't. I knew if I went after him, I'd get my ass kicked. That's why on the way out. I, I do. Do you, do you hate? Do you do you hate Panarin for doing it though? He saw what was yeah, happening. I like it, but yeah, I like yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't. Is Panarin way out of his league? Stand up, you know. But you, you would want. That's my point, Wayne. In that situation, you know as well as I do. You, you don't think. You just go grab a guy, right? Panarin yeah. happened to grab the ra- the wrong guy, right? Yeah, 
I just don't. Uh, here's my thing, and like I don't disagree. I I disagree with the five thousand dollar fine. Um, not because of what happened with Parrot, well, but here's the thing. Do you here's disagree that, with the rules? Huh? That's here's the thing. Real quick, before you say your piece, I think all these people up in arms about you no know, not suspension, the five thousand dollar fine. No, now you're not mad at Tom Wilson. You're mad at the rules. The NHL followed yeah, 100%. the rules. And 100%. I think more people, instead of going after Tom Wilson and, and trying to cancel him and say he deserves to die and going after his girlfriend, take it up with the fucking CBA I agree. and the goddamn rules. Sorry, I, go I agree. I agree. The, I, I, the thing I didn't like more than what happened with Panarin, I just didn't like – I mean, I get it You're with Buchnevich. You know, he's in your goalie's crease. He's roughing up your goalie. As a goalie, I appreciate a player standing up for me. I just it's don't appreciate. Punch. I just don't appreciate the punches in a vulnerable position, yeah. especially when your stick is right well, underneath his neck. Down under his neck, yeah, like, that's that, fun, right? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, like all, I mean, with, with I mean, granted, he's not hitting him really hard, but right. all it takes is all, all it takes all it takes to hit him from the wrong angle. His the stick is there. You might have a guy getting carried off. You know, you might have a guy being the next Steve Moore. Let's be I real agree. about it. You might I have agree. that guy next Steve Moore. But in in that situation, it, like with the Steve Moore Bertuzzi, that looked planned, right? That oh, was a fully unexpected component. So I can see where you're coming from. But listen, every hockey player knows the violence that's involved. I'm just saying, in, in that type of scrum where everything's happening so quickly, and I don't want to use the the term "turn red" because or "turn black" because then people think they're out of control. No, but you just react, right? And yeah. had Ben Aaron came in and tied up with somebody else, it'd be a different story, right? It's just. Things happen very quickly. Um, I, I'm not going to vilify Tom Wilson. I'd trade a fucking first round pick for him. Uh, no, uh, any team that says they wouldn't is lying to themselves. Uh, in, in terms of the Steve Moore Bertuzzi thing, the only thing that I, I hate it, the, the biggest thing I hated no, about man. that, when people say that that had to be done, it did it because no. Steve Moore. Steve Moore fought Brad May earlier in the game, and and he answered the even bell for what he did. Like, great point, Dwayne. And even he, if he, you know, what I mean, he answered the bell for what he did to Noslin. There was so no that, reason for for Bertuzzi. But Bertuzzi should have been thrown in jail for what he did. Let's be real. He should have been thrown in jail. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I'm not disagreeing. No. I'm just saying Bertuzzi should have slashed him in the leg, waited for him to turn around, and drop his gloves. And then, yeah. if you want to sucker punch him then, sure. But don't do it from behind. No. No. All right. Hey, back to it. Jack Eichel, we covered wrist aligning. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the idea of trading him. It goes back to fair value. You brought up an interesting point. The more that... These t- these guys, Jack Eichel and Ristol to make these comments. It the drives leverage, the trade value. You, you leverage, right that's why. That's the biggest reason why he isn't leaving. Because he, he, for, well, for if any team, he was for, smart. He would shut his fucking mouth, say yeah, he exactly, wants to here, you know, and then they trade him. L- listen, l- l- listen. Like you're not doing your franchise any favors by He's not doing himself a favor. Well, he yeah. Well, you will, I, that's that's why I don't really think. Here's the thing: if he actually requested a trade. First off, that would have hit the media almost immediately. I don't like, know. We would all know. I would all know. A player like that. I don't know. I think he just doesn't yeah. give a fuck. He's going to say what he wants to say. I don't. I don't. I'm not saying he's not smart or calculated. No. I think Ristolainen's gotten to the point where he said, "Fuck losing. I like Donnie, but I don't know. Like, I, what do you trade me right fucking now? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you know. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, it, it's just for me. It's more about you know. If you he he that situation, it should be more about a silent approach. Um, it, it's like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll let my agent handle that. I think that he's trying to get this, me get that information out there. Like, I, it's it's such a tough thing, Matt. It's just, I don't know. We got we got. Produ- I know I know we're trying to wrap up here. We got producer. We got nine minutes left. We got producer Steve here to add his thoughts. Uh, a guy who does a lot of. He does a lot of uh, behind-the-scenes stuff for us, and he's actually wearing his classic. Bring him in. He's wearing his 18 for 18 losses in a row, his Where's Kim jersey. There it is. There it is. Love it. Where's Kim? Couple of clicks for Steve. Steve. Listen. If there was ever a day to wear it, it's today. (laughs) It's today. It's it's wild. The comments are wild. I think that Jack – made those comments calculatedly because he's he's pissed off about the way his injury was handled and he wants of people to know is. about it. I mean, what who injury, be, though? The neck injury, how it was handled. He, my my he, question, Steve, I want your take on this. Is it? Do you think he was referring to just the neck injury or how, how throughout this year he was handled? I mean, if management knew 
from the get-go that he had a cracked rib before training camp even started, and then the ankle tweak, and then the neck. This is injury well, he, on injury he on he injury. Rib injury. He, 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 he fractured another rib. Shooting he fractured a another one. It, exactly. And, you know, that's something that you're going to, at the very least, bring up to your coaching staff. And if it happens to the face of the franchise, it's going to go up the totem pole. Like, they know. And it sounds like they realize that the Buffalo Sabres as a product with Jack Eichel on the ice is a product that sells better than the Buffalo Sabres without Jack Eichel on the ice. And that's pretty... Is ever a time to, to say, fuck it, let's get them get healthy? But it's a year when you don't have fans in the building, right? Yeah. So I, I just... I, I, Dwayne, I, I go back to you on like that. Like, what could have they have done differently? He had to shut down Jack early. I think I think he should have never even started the season with the rib thing. I think he should have said, "Hey, you know, you're our franchise setter." And I uh, here's the thing: when people were saying that he's not a leader, he's this that, I guarantee you, Jack came out. And he wanted to play. He wanted to play. He didn't want to be you know, deal with the criticism. Uh, maybe I think just deal with the criticism of you know having people call him out and say he's not a captain. He's just the leader of a team. I, he he said it multiple times. It's my responsibility to be the captain of this team, the leader of this team, no matter what. You know, he understands this is a business. I'll give him credit for that. You know what I mean? What other captain has it harder? In in a hockey market like Buffalo, and and where we care about our hockey, when we haven't made the playoffs, and what is it now, nine years, guys? Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think of a captain that's got a rougher job than Jack right now. And and I'm not relieving him from that. I'm hard-pressed to think of one. With his leadership duties. I think early on in his career, I I did. I think he's matured and he showed more. Um. I don't know. So what's the solution here? Steve, I'll go to you first. What I, I made the point earlier. I don't know if you were listening. I think the Sabres are a lot closer than anybody thinks they are. And I, I know you could say that for a ton of teams that they're a, a move or two away. But I think with, with Dwayne's point, the emergence of Reinhardt as, as, as a top six elite center, I think with the emergence of our young guys that can play on the wing in these top lines, um, you know, Asplin, Roostelainen, Skinner, Middle stat Thompson, like I think we, we are closer than we think. Um, what is the solution? I'm gonna throw out one. I think if if Allmark, even if he does resign, I think we need a fucking goaltender that like in this is the perfect time to bring it up. Some people didn't appreciate Ryan Miller because he came right after Hashik. Fuck that noise. Ryan Miller was great. We took him for granted. He was incredible. And if we had a goalie like that now, maybe we squeak into playoffs one of those years. And we're not talking about a nine-year drought. I don't think we win the cup with the product we've been putting on the ice. But, you know, before Probably I have to dip, I wanted to get your guys' perspectives on that. Um, I think my initial take would be it's clear that when Jack Eichel says something needs to be done, it gets done. Uh, you know, he is the face of the organization as it presently stands. So if Jack wants something – and it's within their power to get it to them, they're going to do it. But in this particular injury scenario, obviously what they wanted was a team with Jack playing, and what Jack wanted was to recover so he could actually play good hockey. And that's a whole can of worms. But that said, what this team needs more than anything is actual hockey ops. And they've started to address that with that one hiring they made, which didn't get announced until the day after the deadline. You talking which about is wild. Manager? Which is wild. <laughs> which is insane. <laughs> But, Are you guys talking about the assistant general manager or somebody yeah, on the other? The, okay, the assistant no, general. I like him. He did a great job in Pittsburgh, um, and I think you're right. Like, where who's in our department? What is it? Is it Kevin? That, Adams that's what I'm saying. And a couple secretaries. What's I, going on? I think, I think what ultimately needs to happen is that Kim or Terry or whichever Pagula thinks they're writing the show needs to admit they don't know what they're doing. And to spend the kind of money they spend on the bills to bring people in who know what the hell they're doing and just let them take over. Let people who actually know how this game works I was, build a team worth watching. It like, might take a few more years. Too much. Inter- too much. Um, they just can't inter- accept that they're not doing the job right. They just it's well, it's, what, it's, what it's an ego thing. thing. I don't know why, but they, it they is. Hired, they, they hit a home run with their first two hires. And they've let them make football decisions. There's been so much meddling, I feel like, on the hockey side. Kim, if you need a hobby, fucking play tennis with your fucking daughter. Yeah, fucking yeah, make, yeah. Go build your yacht. Have have be, be an architecture. 
Yep. In architecture, listen, be an architect. Jesus, Christ. listen. Fuck. Like my my last point before we before we wrap up here, uh, I want I want to get a, get a, make a point on playoff uh, the playoff scenarios and whatnot. But when we say that, bring it in hockey people to make those decisions and put them. You, you, do you guys think that when they brought in Kevin Adams, obviously it was a cheap hire and it was somebody they trusted to be a yes man. But you look at what Colorado has done with Sackick, You know, a former player who was in the league for a long time. Uh, who knows? Who knows the ins and outs? Knows the ropes? You know. You know has been through pretty much all scenarios as a player and and, and seen it all transpire and what it takes to be successful. And you see what happened with 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 Tampa Bay with Eiserman. Now he's in in Detroit where he probably yeah. belongs. Where he belongs. He's making, he's making good he's moves. Making, making good moves. Do you for see, Detroit? Do, do you, yeah. Do you think? Do you think that they saw those moves and thought, hey, maybe that is the right move? We already have a guy in house like Kevin Adams who's been in the league a long time. Granted, those are two different extremes in terms of success. Where right. Kevin, I mean, Grant, <laughs> Grant, Grant, Grant Adams has a cup, but but Steve has like four. Really, Adams yeah, is yeah, not yeah. Iserman. Adams is yeah, not Sackick. Exactly. He's not those guys. So maybe that was their thinking, and it was a cheap yeah. hire. But like at the same time, but at the same time, it's just like ah, man, that's such a that's such a nothing against yeah. Kevin Adams, it, but that it can't is be one and a, done. Yeah, yeah I mean, you got to surround. You got to. The best thing I ever learned as a coach, guys, and I'm so happy I'm not a head coach anymore. You have to surround yourself with great people in your assistant coaches, in your management. You know what I mean? That's the one thing I took away from that fucking whole thing, coaching junior hockey. You're only as good as your staff. And in the NHL, you look at a team like Montreal or Boston or, you know, even Tampa Bay now uh, and what Detroit's building and what Colorado's done, they have excellent people doing their jobs. Nobody's do, trying to do too much. Like uh, I feel like Kevin Adams was probably doing the jobs of four people to start this year, and that's shown, right? Mm -hmm. um, real quick before I go, um, the the playoff situation. Uh, Jack made one interesting comment where he said, "I believe we play in the toughest division in hockey." Do you yep. guys agree? Hundred percent. Oh yeah. One thing that's really struck me is the job that Ron Hextall and Brian Burke have done. They didn't do a ton. But the acquisition of Jeff Carter, guys, we were talking about Pittsburgh being that fourth, fifth, right? Not too long ago. They have jumped into the number one seed. That is locked up. Um, and they've, you know, jumped ahead of the Capitals. So it looks like it's going to be, you know, the Bruins and the Islanders jousting for that number three seed. Who would you guys rather see? So the Capitals are locked into two, right? Mm -hmm. Um right. I would have loved to see Washington Pittsburgh, but you know maybe they'll both win. Would you rather see Pittsburgh play Boston or play the Islanders? Um, hockey. I've, I want to. I want to see whoever gets Boston eliminated in the first round. <laughs> That's what I want to see. I, I so I hate that to that end, I do hope that it's uh, Boston versus Washington because I feel like Washington's going to have an easier time eliminating Boston than the Islanders are, and that's only just because the Islanders. You know they're a great defensive team, but Boston, Boston's going to have a way to check check that. They're they're yeah. going to be they they've got enough offensive talent, and I hate saying that that does include Taylor Hall. Uh, that uh, yeah, no, you're right. In, sp in spite of how defensively minded the Islanders play their game, I feel like Boston they've been in the cup so many times with in so many different scenarios that they're they're going to be able to they can outdo the Islanders, but the Caps. Oh. I feel like the Caps could give them a real run for their money. And well, I feel like if, if if anybody in that top four is going to knock them out first round, it's Caps. So regarding that, um, tune in tonight. The uh, Bruins and Islanders play uh, with the Bees. They have one game remaining and one point lead in the standings. Uh, regardless, I would love to see a Pittsburgh-Washington rematch. How many more times are we going to get to see Ovi and Crosby go head-to-head, -head, guys? So that's why I'm, I'm rooting for that as a hockey fan. Uh, yeah. Another interesting thing, and, and, I, and I'll end with this. We won't go to the Western Conference. I have used the Florida Panthers as a blueprint for the Sabres. You go back three years ago, okay, and they weren't even close. They were at the bottom of the standings. You look at their key players, Barkoff, Huberdo, Ekblad. Sound familiar? Yep. Michael, That's... Reinhardt, Darlene. Now, yep. they brought in Quenville and and the other the manager, I'm blanking on his name, from, from Chicago. Um and they have, you know, added pieces um, and, and not even huge moves, but they brought in the right people. They've shored up their goaltending. Granted, they're probably paying too much. But listen, when they were in their successful run, they were getting quality minutes from Dreger, who's making the league minimum, not uh, Bobrovsky. Anyways, 
they are a blueprint to show Buffalo, hey, we're not that far away, right? If we make right. certain moves, we could be right there with our core. They, them in Tampa Bay will play in the first round, and I am fired up. Their game tonight determines who gets home ice advantage. Now, with the COVID, I don't know how much that matters, but then again, it's Florida, and they have more people in. Yeah. I think that's going to be electric hockey. That means Carolina and Nashville are going to be playing. Uh, I got Carolina sweeping that series. Yep. And, and they're, they're, they're going to be tough to play against. So I, I can't wait. The Eastern Conference can't, up this year are going to be great. I can't and believe – this year with the, with the I season. Can't, I can't believe it took the, uh, Carolina that long to, you know – To back, clinch. To, no, not, no, not clinch, but to give Rod Brindamore that extension. And oh, like, it finally you know, got done? I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got I, loved, days ago. I loved how he said, well, I'm only coming back once you take care of everybody. And yeah. I think I was reading into it. I think he's talking about the fucking omelet guy, the cook, like yep, everybody. Yep. And I yep. fucking love it. What a hockey guy that is. But one last thing before we take off. I do want to make a comment about Jake McCabe uh, and his comments as presser. I've been that was the only positive while. thing I yeah, heard. Like, well, uh, there, was, was there, was, there, there was a little bit of positive in Eichel's. Not a lot, but there was a little bit to, 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 to at least be Dude. optimistic about a little bit. But Jake McCabe said he's he's optimistic about this blue line going forward. He said he, he he sees a lot of promise, and he sounds like a guy who wants to resign. That is definitely another priority for yeah, the Buffalo yeah, Sabres, getting Jake McKay blocked up. So with that being said, this has been Episode 62 of Two Goalies. I'm like, I know, Johnny, you got to get on the ice. Uh, yeah, we'll be back. We'll, we'll be back. Wait, we'll one be last thing, back. Wayne. In, my, in, the, in the view, we have the four best goalies in the era. You've got Hashik and Wall behind you. Can you see Marty Brodeur right there? No. Right there. Uh, yeah, he's on that low post. And there. There are three oh, and oh, there oh I got it. I got two. it. Yeah, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny I love off. you. Go ahead. I got a jet. All right, guys. Uh, we'll, let, we'll let Johnny take off here. Uh, I still got Steve, the producer, on with us. But, yeah, man, I think Jake McCabe's comments uh, were very promising. I, I, I've always liked Jake McCabe. He's a good stay-at-home defenseman. He's a leader. I think he takes pride in being a leader. And I think he's a guy that you want to keep around in the long term. Um, and I think he's a guy that wants to be here, even through this entire shit show of events today. I think he's a guy that you want to keep around as part of your leadership group. And priority number one this offseason, find a way to get Jack Eichel happy. Like, make him want to still be a Buffalo Sabre. Of course. He did say, he did say flat out, yeah, as long as he's here with this team, that he's committed to being a leader and being a captain. He sounds like he does take pride in that. Um, but again, he understands this is a business and what, what he has to do what's best for him and the team has to do what's best for them. Um, I think that what, if, if in any way that relationship is salvageable and it's not beyond repair, especially even with the, the comments on how the injuries were handled, you have to do your best to figure that out because I just don't think there's a return in any trade scenario where you get the value of Jack Eichel back, especially, especially after the weight that press conference went today and what he revealed. Of course not. It's It, it would be a Ryan O'Reilly 2.0. You'd be selling him for parts rather than, you know, generational player for generational player who hasn't quite met their ceiling yet. You know, we know what Jack Eichel is capable of. And in return, you don't want to trade him away unless you're going to get somebody who's, you know, could potentially have that same ceiling, might not. But you don't want to you don't want to trade him for multiple picks and a Tage Thompson and some guy who's going to go back mm -hmm. to Europe. It, it, we can't do that again. You know, if we aren't already like the laughing stock of this league and every league, letting Eichel walk for next to nothing that like like I'll feel I'd feel a little bit like a clown putting this or any jersey back on again and going to the going to the stadium any stadium anywhere regardless where I live. And watching this team do what they do. If like if Eichel walks out the door, if Reinhardt walks out the door, how do you inspire the kids that are still here when their deals are up in like two to three years that this is the place you want to be? You just watch two generational talents just say, see ya before they were twenty six. Yep. You know, it's... like you, you can't you can't, if you if you let those guys You'll be go, rebuilding looking... a rebuild before you rebuild. <laughs> Yeah, you're looking at at least another five years before you can be competitive again, and then you're in the same exact situation as you are now. And the common denominator here is just, and I, I can I, I, I don't want to constantly be the guy who points at Kim Pagula for all the issues on this team. 
but for God's sakes, for God's sakes, like what was just revealed today, doesn't that show you that you don't know what you're doing and you need to put people in charge that do? Like, I thought my yelling was over. We're not even a couple of days removed from the fucking season. And here I am. I want to go down to Florida, find out where she lives, and take a shit on her front lawn because that's what she's doing to this team. She's shitting all over it. She really is. Fuck, man. Like, like, how do you – like, what? The guy was constantly injured this season. He wanted to put his own health first. Which he should, which he should, because you know what? He want, plans on being a father and a husband and, you know, having a normal life after hockey. And when you deal with an injury that involves the neck and the ribs, or the, like that, that could have long-term negative effects on your life after hockey. So how can you blame the guy for wanting to put that first? You should have shut him down. Oh, my God. And not force a guy to sit here and play injured when he didn't want to, when he was already doing that to begin with. It's his neck, for God's sakes. You really only have one of them. And it's it, it just goes to show that when it comes to Pagulas, at least when it comes to the Sabres, it's money first and then the on-ice product after the fact. And that's – it's fundamentally not how they run – not how they let things run with the Bills, but also just fundamentally not how you build a winning team in any sport. I don't care what the sport is. And so, it, especially if you're going to do that to your, you know, if Josh Allen had a herniated disc in his neck and they still wanted him to fucking throw dimes, like, Biffy would throw her through a table. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's insane. In no universe would that have been acceptable. But for some reason, because it's happening to the star player of the Buffalo Sabres, like, they can just do it. It's yeah. it's endlessly fucking disappointing. And like it it keeps begging the like people like you and me, like we're gonna reach a threshold at some point where we're just like fuck this, let's just go watch Kirill Kaprizov just light it up in the West. St. Paul's pretty similar to Buffalo. It's cold, it snows a lot, let's fucking go. I'm kidding, you're never gonna uh, you, you don't wanna no, leave Buffalo. I, will. I, I know I, it's, just... it's it's fucking rough. It shouldn't rough be this is, rough. Rough is one word for it, man, and it's it's so infuriating. It's so like you you had a lot of positive and just a, a, a season of again misery to go to, to to think about um at the end of the season and you know with my my final I'll hang up and listen to the year and there's a lot to be positive about and then you hear all this and it's just like come on does it ever end for this franchise does it ever end can you just give us a break man. Like, can you just give us a break and just, like, 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 give us something positive to hold on to? And there's nothing positive anymore. There's nothing. This is so bad. This is so bad. They couldn't even do the retro jerseys right. The goat's on the shoulders should have been on the crest. I, that that's a joke. I'm I'm sorry. No, I, no it's I, fine. I can it's tell fine, you're just, I'm I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to good cop bad cop here. You are clearly distressed. I'm clearly distressed, but. I've spent my life deflecting with humor rather than just getting it's very fine. It's fine. audibly it's, upset. I get it. it, it I, I'm right there with you. What do we do now from here? Like, that's my number one priority is trying to, you know, fix this relationship if it is able to be fixed between Jack and this organization. And I, I just don't know what else can be done because this whole this opens a whole do do can of worms this injury and how it was handled and him being forthcoming about it and just it did he, like you know what i mean there were positive things to say what you said like he does he does take his position with his team as captain seriously that if if that if he yeah. is back next season he will take it seriously and that's the, thing, that's, the, that's the thing that people need to remember is the fact that he didn't flat out come out and say yeah you know i've heard, you know, I've requested a trade. He was forthcoming about talking about the injury and the disconnect and how it was handled. He was, forth- but he wasn't as forthcoming about you know being, you know, have I requested oh, yeah. a trade? Yeah, he he didn't say yes or no to that. You know, he deflected it. So that makes him believe no, he hasn't requested a trade. Like he hasn't c- c- come out and said that. Did, did he put this organization, this franchise, in a position where they might have to start thinking? Well, yeah, he did. But he also flat out said that if he is back next season, that he will continue to be the leader and the captain of this hockey team. So that is the one thing positive I took from that. 
out of his interview is he did say from, that from Michael. Yeah, for um, sure. Um, he also he also just had nice things to say about what Donnie did with the team. Yeah, that too. See, and, seeing know, the younger guys light it up when they got put into roles that they didn't think they were going to be in this season. He did. I mean, he has nice things to say about his teammates, about current coaching. He's got nice. You know, he's upset that we're not putting W's on the board as anyone would after what's it now five six years of just yeah. losing, losing, losing. Yeah, but, you know, you lose enough, you you start asking, is it possible to win? And, you know, and it's not even just whether or not this current relationship is reconcilable, but if it's not, and then he goes and we do dream the impossible dream and get some other quasi generational talent to come in, are we just going to do the same thing to that guy? And the, the, the bitch of it is, man, is if you, I, I've been, I've been adamant about saying this. If you're trading Jack Eichel to a team that can afford to give those pieces, the chances, the picks you're getting aren't going to be very high draft picks. So that's a crapshoot in itself. That's exactly. a crapshoot in itself. You're hoping that those guys are good enough to to fill the void or the culmination of those guys are going to be good. Enough. There's no sure thing in, in a pick in the first round after, say, the 10th pick. There's no sure thing, especially here in Buffalo where you already lack the scouting staff that's going to be reliable enough to make sure that they get those picks right. Secondly, who has the, 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 the current roster players who can afford to give up those? Nobody. Nobody. You're going to tell me the Rangers? You want Kako? You want Lafreniere? What did they prove this year that says they're equal to the value of Jack? They literally didn't prove a thing. They didn't prove yeah. a thing that they're even valued at where they were drafted. So, like, you know, that's yeah. not value to me. That's not it. You want to you talk? You, you, uh, go to a team like Vancouver for this. You want to make a deal with Vancouver? That conversation starts and doesn't end with Pedersen. It starts and doesn't end with Pedersen. That's Jack Eichel's value to me. And the way I see it is the comments today didn't do the leverage of the Buffalo Sabres and a Jack Eichel trade any justice. Any justice at all. So that's, again, why I just say you don't trade him because you're, there's, you're, you have no chance at getting that value back out. You have none. You just keep him. And you say, hey, Jack, we're going to – kill ourselves to build around you. We're sorry with the way these things are handled, but from an upper management, this is where we're going, this is who we're bringing in, and this is the way we're going to handle the offseason, and this is who we're going to keep around. And I think, A, you get a starting goaltender in this team, whether it's Linus Omar, or a, a, a more than reliable backup. Figure that out. Secondly, lock up Sam Reinhart long-term to be your second-line center. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. He's proved Third, it. A million times over this year. You address, he, you address, and then third, you address free agency the same way Florida did this past off season, the same exact way. Do not wait. Do not waste all of your time and energy trying to get that, you know, that golden ticket player, the Taylor Hall, which yep. this year could very well be Patrick Line. Although maybe it won't because Torts is out the door. But like, yeah. don't spend all your energy trying to chase after that one dude, and then let all of these smaller pieces that could be exactly the piece of the puzzle that your team actually needs just sign somewhere else potentially sign to a contender in your division like again they made they made perfect acquisitions for Hagee, duclair it was smart and that said drieger is up at the end of this year yeah, and he is. Bob, bob's on the books forever spencer knight just signed so if they're going to protect somebody my money's on knight Yep. I mean, they might not actually have to because he might not no, have played no, enough. He, no, no, no. He's on an entry level deal. He, so they, they don't, don't have, have to protect. worry about protecting. They don't have to worry All about right. him. No. So maybe um, they'll protect Rieger. I don't know. I think their best bet is to trade him. And please, please, Drieger and Olmark as a tandem here. I can live. I can sleep happy at night knowing that McCabe and not Risto is the guy teaching these young kids how to play defense like an actual defenseman with Olmark and Drieger behind the pipe. In the pipes, I, you know, whatever unmitigated shit show is going to unfold on the front end, the back end being, you know, that secure, I, it it can help me sleep at night just a little bit. Yeah, and Ryan Lindgren has just been extended uh, with the Rangers, average of three oh. three year deal, average of three million dollars. So it sounds like three good year for deal for nine million dollars. It sounds like so uh, good, good for, for him. him. Good yeah. good hockey player. Um, 
he's he's got that and grit just, and he and, doesn't and have like, to spend six million for it. <laughs> and, and, and this is and this is another one of the comments from Eichel just tweeted out by Matthew Bove. As Eichel, as long as I'm here, my duty is to be the leader of this team and be available for the guys in the room. That's one of the positives I did take from that. Um, I I just absolutely. Uh, and that's sh- and that should be the baseline of any team captain. Like, yeah, that's so your guy. That's your rock. That's the dude you turn out to. There. He understands this is a business, and there's you know, I, I that's why I think he's here next year. This is going to be one hell of a long summer, isn't it? It's going to be a long road to October. Yep. So get your that, AC unit ready because you're going to get heated. Yep. That <laughs> being said, uh, this has been episode 62 of Two Goalies One Mike. Just want to remind everybody this is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Use code word Trainwreck for 20% off plus free shipping. Get yourself the Lawnmower 3.0, an unbelievable razor. Use it to trim up my beard this morning. Uh, Built in flashlight, a it's guard true, that. Uh, yep. A guard that uh, protects you against nicks and cuts, and it's waterproof to use in the shower in case you're uh, you're in a hurry or on the go. So, unbelievable piece of technology. Favorite, best razor I've ever used. Manscaped.com. Code word train wreck, all capital letters. T R A I N W R E C K. Just as you see it spelled there at the bottom of the screen. Twenty percent off plus free shipping on any purchase. Also brought to you by Outlet Liquor. What's your outlet? Uh, the place to buy a case. Uh, you know, absolutely unbelievable deals over at Outlet Liquor here in uh, Buffalo, New York. And, of course, Amherst Ale House. Uh, I know the season's over, but during the Sabres season, you get uh, half off uh, pictures of Molson, Labatt's, Bud Light, uh, you know, Blue, Blue Light, the whole nine yards, plus uh, half off medium pepperoni pizzas. Make sure you go to Amherst Ale House. Their food is unbelievable. Uh, sponsor of the show here at Two Goals One Mike and Trainer X Sports. Guy, uh, Steve, uh, it's been fun, uh, fun season, not uh, fun season, not that, at all. I lied. Yeah, but, that, that, um, that's a phrase for it. Fun. You know, um, we'll see where this you know, this road takes us with these. Uh, yeah, I just I'm still blown away by what we heard from Jack Eichel. So, um, you know, with that being said, guys, this has been again where's episode Kim? six. Where's yeah, Kim? where's Kim? Hashtag where's Kim? Start it up because it's about to get going again. So. That being said, guys, this has been episode 62 of Two Goalies, One Mike. Um, you know, <laughs> it's been uh, it's been fun. So that being said, you guys enjoy the rest of your Monday, and uh, we will talk to you later.